Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to the service this morning on this feast of the presentation of the Christ child in the temple. It's also called Candlemas. Now Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to the temple to present him to the Lord as their firstborn son. Now for us gathered today, not only here in a Thai union of parishes, but in all four corners of the world, it is that time of the year when, as our first hymn puts it, we are invited to pray when Christmas meets Easter on Candlemas Day. And today is a celebration of Holy Communion, and our first hymn focuses our minds and hearts on the story of the presentation. Hymn number 203, When Candles Are Lighting on Candlemas Day.
and if you're joining and following the BCP, it's page 201, and we say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. And we say together, Almighty God, God our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned in thought and word and, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We, we are, are truly sorry and humbly repent. repent. For the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son Jesus Christ, Christ, have mercy on us and, and forgive us, that, that we, we may walk in newness of life to the glory of, of your name. name. Amen. Amen. And the absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect of this, the feast of the presentation of the Christ child in the temple. Almighty and ever living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our mortal nature. May we be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we sit now for our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment, I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. And we now have the hymn of the gradual, hymn number 134, Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King.
and we stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 22. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. And she was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of the Lord was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, our readings this morning speak to us loudly and clearly over the centuries. We are looking at generations of people who waited, waiting for the Messiah, living out their daily lives and waiting. Now, what they, say, what they say resonates with our lives today as we sit in lockdown in the eye of the COVID storm. They speak to us about waiting, something with which we can now identify only too well. But they also speak to us about hope, and that changes everything. But here's the thing. There's a huge difference between waiting and marking time. Marking time, sitting impatiently, twiddling our thumbs, not doing anything in particularly anything useful or even interesting, in a, is a waste. It's a waste of the precious gift of time. Now, waiting is different. It has a purpose. Waiting for the Lord, the sort of waiting we as Christian disciples deal in, is a different thing altogether to simply marking time. And with the pandemic and the necessary lockdowns over the past year, we've come, albeit unwillingly, to know a little more about waiting. We sit at home in lockdown, waiting, trying to stay safe. We wash our hands until they're dry and sore. We hurry through the supermarket trying to keep our distance from the other shoppers. We log in or out of yet another Zoom meeting. Now, at first, we waited for the vaccine to be discovered, and now we wait for the vaccine to be delivered. Waiting, wearing masks, washing hands, 
trying not to lose hope. I mean, we had it sorted, really, when you think about our former lives. Waiting was not in our lexicon, was it? Fast everything, fast food, fast broadband, fast cars. We had it all at our fingertips. And then came the virus and the lockdown, and we were brought to a sudden halt. But now we wait with purpose. We wait in hope because we know deep in our hearts that the kingdom of God will come and that the vaccine will come. You see, it's how we wait that makes all the difference. We could despair. We come depressed and we could become depressed. And indeed, we will still have those moments of anxiety and hopelessness anyway, when it seems that the lockdown is never going to end. But overall, when we reach out to God and to other people in a spirit of concern and of love, we realize that we're not alone. And then our waiting becomes transformed and bearable. And remember what Isaiah promised, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall run and not grow weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Because, as I say, how we wait, how we live while we wait is so important. And Malachi says it's all about faithfulness in worship, courage in our lives, standing up for what is right, and compassion and kindness to those in trouble. Now, the scene which Luke describes as well today in the temple has everything. It has the young, it has the old, it has parents and grandparents and a baby. It has anxiety and apprehension. It has nervousness, but it also has holiness. And they're all there together in the temple on that fateful day, all woven through with golden threads of hope, held together through generations of patient waiting. So remember, Simeon had lived a long life. Yet, through it all, he held on to a promise given to him by the Holy Spirit, I will not die before I see the Lord. Hope does that for us. We can live and we can wait. Hope sees what's invisible and it, it, it feels what's intangible. Hope gives our life meaning. People of hope have discovered that the vast difference in life is the difference between waiting and marking time. And Anna, we know little about her. She was a prophetess, an 84-year-old widow who'd lost her husband after seven years of marriage. So she knew the meaning of heartbreak and sorrow and loneliness. So how do we wait with the Lord? How are we faithful in our waiting and not just marking time? How do we use our precious gift of time wisely and well without losing hope? We need to know that as Christian disciples, we wait with the Lord for the Lord. And as Isaiah says, we will not grow weary. Because knowing that, having hope in God does change everything. And this morning, I think we must leave the last words with Simeon. um, In the temple with Anna and Mary and Joseph and the baby. And here's what he says. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Amen. Amen. We join together now in an affirmation of faith, uh, a faith which will give us the all that we need to learn to wait patiently on the Lord. As we say together, we believe in one in God, God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth of all that that is seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the the only Son of God, God, eternally begotten of the the Father, God from God, God, light from light, light, true God God from true God, God, begotten not not made, of one one being with the Father, Father, through him him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our our sake sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge baptism for the forgiveness of sins, <laughs> we look for we the look resurrection, for the resurrection of, the of the dead and, and the, the life of, of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. And now to our prayers, let us pray. Loving God, we pray for us, your church gathered throughout the world, that we will be a light to the nations and a beacon for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for an enlightenment of minds and hearts among those who act and work for the public good. We think particularly of all the aid agencies at work throughout the world, bringing help and hope and light and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for your reign of peace that no people need live lives in fear of death, in fear of hunger. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who speak and those who hear the prophetic word today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for wisdom in old age and for courage and compassion in youth as we think of Anna and Simeon and the Christ child, Mary and Joseph. We think of our own families, our own children and parents and grandparents. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer from this winter's cold and wet. We pray for all who are homeless, for all who are struggling to find a new home, for all who live in fear of eviction, we pray, Lord, for those who help them, that they may be guided to those most in need. And especially, Lord, we pray for the young, for those children with no homes. We pray for all those in direct provision, for those in homeless hostels, for all who work and help. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all those who are facing illness, misfortune, we pray for all who care for them. We pray for all who are afflicted with COVID, those who are working to help them, for all frontline staff, for all the people who make our lives possible in the lockdown, for the bin men and the teachers, for the supermarket workers, for the canteen workers in the hospital. We pray, Lord, for all of these, that they may be given strength and patience. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those whom you have called home at this time. We give you thanks for the life and Christian witness of Sheila Elder. We thank you for all the work she did in this parish. We ask you to be with those who mourn her passing, to be with us, to be with her family, Felicity and Richard and Ed and Kelly and all her relatives and many friends. May she rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept that these our prayers prayer for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the peace. And Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And the hymn of the offertory is hymn number 596, Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. And we're using prayer number three. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcome us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross and, and with, with love stronger, stronger than, than death, he made, he made the perfect, perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night uh, before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts make, made for us, who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven forever praising you and saying holy holy holy, holy lord, lord god, god of power and might heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest thanks to you be to you our god for your gift beyond words amen amen amen, amen. amen. and as our savior christ has taught us we are going to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them with the trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gift of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord, Lord to, to the, the glory Lord. of God our Father. So we come to the great silence. We pray in the silence of our own hearts for our families and those we love, our friends, our community. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out from the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning in our service of Holy Communion on this feast of presentation. And we pray that you will have a blessed week. And our final hymn this morning, the words of Simeon. Hymn number 691, Faithful Vigil Ended.